Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today we're going to be taking a look at something a bit different from what I normally cover, but I'm really glad to be talking about this game. Gunfire Reborn is an FPS roguelike RPG game that offers a surprising amount of depth for an early access game. It's got outstanding reviews on Steam, and I want to give a huge shout out to Do Ye Interactive Entertainment for sponsoring this video, because if they hadn't I might have actually overlooked this game and I've been having an absolute blast with it. And if you're interested in checking it out for yourself, which I highly recommend doing, use the link in the video description. Now, there's a lot to get into with Gunfire, and my guess is that your first impression is that it looks like some cartoony kids game. Don't let the visuals fool you. This is a solid shooter with a big learning curve and tons of depth. Now, just like with most roguelike shooters, every run is a slightly different experience. As you progress, you acquire upgrades and you get new weapons that all have random attributes and interact with each other. In the end, how far you get in a run depends on both the interplay of your knowledge of the game and your raw FPS skills. This allows for two really rewarding ways to get better at the game, both in your intimate knowledge of items and skills and how to level up your character properly and also just getting really good at nailing perfect shots. Now, when you first begin the game, you'll have one hero unlocked, the Crown Prince. The second hero I'll buy is unlocked at level 30. Each character has unique abilities. The Crown Prince has a smoke bomb grenade and an energy orb that damages and freezes enemies in place. Albai has a more standard grenade that does damage on impact and can dual wield his weapons for a limited time. Now doing a full run through the game consists of three stages, each with four levels and a final boss fight. At the end of each level, you unlock a chest that gives you three random awakening skill choices, but you can only pick one. These are basic modifiers that affect your damage stats and how your abilities in interact with enemies. Some awakening skills simply give you more grenades or faster cooldowns, while others can give you damage multipliers for the game's various elemental damage types. You can mix and match skills to try and fit your specific play style. You can pick skills that help you deal with enemies that are trickier for you, or you can try and go down one specific path to try and maximize a very specific play style. You can also find hidden vaults in each level that reward you for completing a challenge. Some of them are combat focused, while others are more about platforming. These chests offer occult scrolls. While awakening skills are specific to your character, occult scrolls are more like general power-ups. They apply universally to both the heroes, and many of them have a pro and con. For example, the Brutal Glove Scroll gives you 35% bonus damage, but it also removes critical damage multipliers. Bosses and enemies also drop occult scrolls, though it's only a guaranteed drop from boss kills. Now, as you learn the game, you'll become familiar with the three different element types. There's Shock, Decay, and Burn. Each has its strengths and weaknesses. Shock is effective against shields, Decay is effective against armor, and Burn is effective against enemies with no shields or armor. Maximizing your damage output is a balancing act between picking the right awakening skills and switching weapons. You start each round with a revolver and two slots for additional weapons. While the revolver does scale with your build as you play through a run, it doesn't do elemental damage, and you can't replace it with a new weapon. This means you're always limited to a maximum of two elemental weapons. The best practice, in my opinion, is to have one weapon of each element. Having two weapons of the same element type will limit your overall DPS. I found having a shock weapon and burn weapon to be quite ideal. There's also over 30 different weapons currently in the game, so there's a lot to choose from and a lot of different play styles. They also range from your typical SMGs and assault rifles to fire-breathing dragons and rocket launchers. Now to make the management of all elemental damage and weapon effects a lot easier, all of them are color-coded. Shock is blue, decay is green, burn is red. Weapons that inflict elemental damage also have an icon on the HUD showing the element symbol. Now, on every level, there's a chance to spawn a peddler or a craftsman. The peddler sells weapons, ammo, and health, while the craftsman can upgrade and respec weapons. Both spawn on every stage's final boss fight level. If you want to hold on to a weapon for an entire run, it's sort of possible if you constantly upgrade it, but it's often cheaper and smarter, I find, to just pick up new weapons. When playing in co-op, the loot isn't split between players, so your squad mates can drop their weapon pickups for each other. And similar to other roguelikes, as you play, you earn upgrade points for your character 
that you can then spend on skills and upgrades. These points are called Soul Essence and are dropped by enemies when killed. At the end of each run, you spend whatever Soul Essence you have on the talent tree. You can also use your Soul Essence to revive yourself once you get downed. However, unlike similar games, your talent tree doesn't get wiped out after a run. So you're always leveling up and getting stronger as you play. Now, when it comes to the game's combat, it is surprisingly responsive and intuitive, especially for an early access game. The weapon mechanics are relatively simple, as only a few weapons even let you ADS or have secondary fire modes, so you rely on your aim, dodging, and abilities to kill your enemies. It's a simple and straightforward combat system, but because of the interplay between your abilities and weapons, there's a lot of meta to the gameplay. The elemental damage types also have some combined effects. Burning and shocking an enemy, for example, can make them confused and even attack each other. Now, as you become more familiar with the game, you'll realize that selecting the right awakening skills, weapons, and upgrades is key to maximizing your DPS. A run can go sideways very quickly if you pick the wrong upgrades along the way but it can also make you feel overpowered if you choose the right ones. I'm sure some things will be balanced out as the game is developed more, but right now I'd say it's in a pretty good state. I rarely felt like I was losing runs due to some imbalance in the game versus me just having a bad run. And even when I did feel super powerful, bosses and elite enemies still put me in my place. What's cool is that there's an inherent amount of randomness that means some of the runs just aren't going to be as good as others. But if you are picking the right weapons and essential every run has a shot at being really good. The goal isn't so much to beat all three bosses either. Mastering weapons, leveling up the talent tree, and unlocking new occult scrolls is where most of the replayability comes from. Now in co-op, the difficulty is definitely scaled up per player. Co-op is also where the game really shines. You can play with friends, but there's also online matchmaking. Because everyone is limited to two elemental weapons, co-op gives you a lot more freedom in how you spec out your character. Each party member can focus on one or two elements instead of constantly balancing all three of them. Your abilities also stack with your co-op partners, so you get huge multipliers with them that deal tons of damage and can essentially stun lock enemies. Now, of course, being an early access game means that gunfire still has some missing features and content. Personally, I'd like to see more heroes and stages added. Of course, who doesn't want more content? I'd also like to see more elemental damage types, weapons, enemies, and ascension skills. And I'm sure many of those things will come in due time, but considering that the game only launched a few weeks ago, it is surprising how polished it already feels. The gameplay and meta already offer hours and hours of replayability. It just needs a little bit more content to be a game that players could sink hundreds of hours into. It's also surprising to see such a well-crafted game that isn't relying on microtransactions or battle passes, yet is so affordable. In my opinion, I think you get a lot for just $12. In the end, I think Gunfire Reborn is a really fun roguelike party game with a surprising amount of depth and a pretty bright future. If you guys want to see more Gunfire Reborn, I would certainly be happy to make another video on it for you. Let me know in the comments down below. Use the link in my description to download Gunfire Reborn if you're interested, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.